Usually when people talk about ethics, about morality, there's an implicit assumption in everything that they say that if they can show that one alternative is morally questionable or wrong in some way, that that automatically justifies an alternative. And it seems clear to me that reality is not set up for us to always have ethically sound choices. We can't always behave morally. Sometimes you have only bad choices. And I can give a couple of examples. The first example would be um, loyalty versus ethics. If you have loyalty to a comrade, say, in the military or especially in the police force, that loyalty is important and instrumental in your ability to do your job because you have to put your life on the line sometimes. So what if you have this deep loyalty for someone and they're corrupt in some way or they're pushing the boundaries of what is ethical? Well, this plays out all the time. And it can play out in a, a civilian sense as well. Like, what if, what if your brother commits a serious crime and tells you about it? Do you go to the police and betray your brother, which is wrong, or do you help him cover up the crime, which is wrong? Clearly, this conundrum, if you are one of those people who likes to see things in black and white, you can pick one. Like, you know, some people would say, he's your brother, like, you know, obviously you, you have to protect him. And other people would say, well, that's just wrong and you shouldn't do that. that. That's a crime and he should be punished. It's his own choice. And these, what people don't understand is that they're both right in what they're saying and both wrong in presuming that the other side doesn't have a point. And... To me, this is an inescapable problem. Neither choice is ethical. You have a choice of two wrongs. Another example would be one of the most important principles in our legal system is that a person is to be considered innocent until proven guilty. And there have to be standards of proof that can't just be everyone thinks or everyone knows or whatever. You've got to actually prove it. And that's very important, and I'm not going to go into why, but it should be very easy for you to look into the philosophical reasons why this has been justified in the past. But then there's also the obvious fact that criminals get away with crimes because of this, because they can use that... Uh, leeway that that gives them to fabricate evidence to make make it so that it's not beyond a reasonable doubt that they've done the crime and organized crime operates freely as a result so what do you do do you get rid of the you know presumption of innocence well of course not because then it becomes a fickle, unjust process of accusation plus, you know, getting on the right side of a judge means that you um, prevail in a false accusation. What if, but you know, if we keep it this way, then organised criminals will just get away with it. They just get away with crimes because you can't prove it, even though everyone knows, and... They're not even being subtle about it. And they're walking around in gangs, bullying people, harassing people, stealing from people, occasionally killing people, you know, sex trafficking, doing all these horrible things. But you can't just throw people in prison because you think everyone knows. This is not an escapable problem. And 
that that's my premise in talking about this is people always assume that there must be a morally right answer and it just doesn't seem evident to me at all when you actually think about the trade-offs you have 